Welcome back to another C2 Figures tutorial. Today we are going to be tackling the sodium chloride lattice. And on the face of it, this seems like it should be an extension of the FCC BCC simple cubic lattice that I made before or similar to the perovskite. And in many ways we're going to use the same things, array modifiers and particle systems. But this one is a little bit fun, so let's get underway. We're going to take our default cube, come down to the modifiers, and add in three array modifiers. With relative offset set to 1, making sure to turn on merge, and again adding array modifiers for the y and z direction. So 1 in the y, making sure to turn merge on, and shift r to add that next array modifier, shift r repeating whatever last action you did, and again making sure that we have merge turned on. And the reason for this is if we come into the wireframe view by hitting z and dragging to wireframe like this, we can see now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points for that cube, but they are propagated throughout, so we can have the nice alternating approach to our atoms. This is the fun part of the sodium chloride lattice. I'm going to want to use this array again to make a bigger lattice, and so rather than having to copy all those modifiers, I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate this mesh, hit X and drag it out, and I'm going to call this duplicated object array holder, and I'm going to call this object NACL lattice. Now what I want to do here is apply all of these array modifiers. So I'll just come down, open each one in order, and hit apply. Tab into edit mode and you can now see that I have all of the points that I want. And so with every point selected, if you want to do that, just go ahead and hit A to select everything. Come to select and choose checker deselect. And that will give the every other point that we need for the atoms. So let's come down to object data properties, add in a vertex group, and we'll call this one sodium atoms. I'm going to go ahead and assign these vertices, then hit control I to invert that selection, create a second vertex group called chlorine atoms, and assign those vertices. Perfect. Now, so that we can get this object moving forward, this will be our base unit cell, but we want to be able to array it in many dim dimensions. We'll select our NACL lattice, shift and click our array holder, and control L and copy the modifiers. Now we can hide our array holder, but we've just very quickly copied all those arrays back so we have them available to us again. And we'll scale, we'll look at that, and we'll start adding in the atoms. So go ahead and hit shift A and add in a UV sphere. I'll hit Control one to add one subdivision surface, right-click and choose Shade Smooth. And then just with G, I'll bring this out to the side. Then with Shift D, I will duplicate that object and drag another one out. I'll hit S to scale it and go by about 0.5, usually just because the sodium will be smaller than the chlorine. We'll start now by coming into Material Preview Mode and starting to add some material. So I want the sodium to be red. And I would like the chlorine to be green. Nothing terribly complicated here, and we'll name these appropriately. So this larger sphere will be chlorine atom, and this smaller sphere will be sodium. Sodium atom. Perfect. Coming back to our cube object, or our NACL lattice, we'll tab into edit mode, and to see that we have those points selected, we will Alt A to deselect everything, and then we'll just come over to the Particle Properties tab and add in a new particle system. We'll name this one Sodium Atoms, and we'll make it a hair particle system. For a source, we will change this from faces to verts, use the modifier stack, and uncheck random order. Under Render, we will choose Object, and for the object, we will choose the Sodium Atom. You can see now that the sodium atom is at every single point. We don't want that right now. So we're going to come down and we are going to go to vertex groups. And for density, we will choose sodium atoms. Great. Now, if we were to tab into the wireframe by just hitting Z and moving to the side, so it's not really tab, but if we were to come into wireframe, you would actually see that the sodium atoms are at every other point. And we're going to use the other vertex group to put the chlorine atoms in. Add another particle system. This one will be called chlorine atoms. Again, we'll go with hair, and once again, emit from verts using the modifier stack, unchecking random order for render, object, and for the instance object, we will use that chlorine atom. Once again, we'll come down to density, and this time we'll use the chlorine atoms for the density group. If we come back into material preview, you can now see that on the face of it, we have all of the atoms and the alternating pattern that we want. 
and to make those all visible underneath the particle systems, very important that is underneath, we will add a wireframe modifier. And just like that, you can now see we have our sodium chloride lattice, quick and easy in Blender with the ability to change any of the aspects. We can make the atoms different with their materials, say metallic. We can make them larger or smaller using these settings in our particle system if we want to. And of course, we can use the array modifiers that we have for the lattice to make our lattice longer or smaller or higher or wider. And of course, if you're going to update the lattice to very, very large dimensions, you will have to update your particle systems appropriately so that you have enough atoms to accommodate each of the sites. But just like that, that is how you go ahead and make the sodium chloride lattice. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing and sharing with your friends and colleagues. And until next time, have yourself a great old day.